don't yet know for certain where that plane went, but the pictures that we are now showing are of the Pentagon with smoke billowing out of it. The Pentagon has been evacuated, uh, of course the symbol of American military power, and the White House, the symbol of American political power, has also been evacuated. Well, this is a, uh, these are these are absolutely extraordinary moments uh, here in Washington, here in really the whole of the United States. Uh, the idea of the Pentagon, this is the headquarters of the Defense Department, all of the U.S. military power, which of course has, has been projected so much around the world. For that to come under attack in this way, if indeed this is an attack on the Pentagon, Stephen, uh, not some sort of extraordinary coincidence. Yes, we can interrupt you uh, again. An aircraft has crashed near the United States Defense Department, so we can confirm now that a third plane has crashed, this one near the United States Defense Department. The west wing of the White House has been evacuated and of course the Pentagon itself has been evacuated. We don't as yet know that this aircraft which crashed near the Defense Department uh, was, the, uh, was the one that was hijacked in Boston, um, but it seems more than coincidence. Well, I think this really is the most extraordinary day uh, for, for, for people here and for really the whole of the, the, whole of the United States. I think Never before, I think I'm right in saying, has something on this scale and of the, with this symbolic potency happened here uh, for the Pentagon to come under attack. The U.S. This is, this is the Treasury, according to at least one eyewitness, is being evacuated. Well, that's, we're just being told, of course, that the United States Treasury has also been evacuated. It's not that extraordinary, is it, Stephen's speech, that uh, major buildings of power in Washington would now be evacuated if there's been an explosion in the Pentagon. It would be, it would be only sensible to evacuate buildings that represent American power, and that's of course now what's happening. Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, if I was sitting in one of those buildings just down the road from here, in the Treasury or uh, in the White House or in the in the State Department, I think I'd be pretty nervous, and I'd be I'd be wanting to be evacuated too. Uh, this seems to be a very very coordinated operation, and one does wonder, you know, is is, it, is there anything more coming? You know, this is a, this is absolutely quite remarkable, and I well, think it's going to. Give, give Americans a sense of, of really of, uh, of being under threat, if not uh, in physical terms for the whole population. The symbolic power is, is, is remarkable and, and, and quite chilling, I think, for people here. Well, of course, there's going to be claim and counterclaim of responsibility. A few moments ago, um, somebody purporting to represent the Democratic Front for the Liberace, Liberation of Palestine phoned Abu Dhabi Television and claimed responsibility uh, for that. We were cautioned about taking that seriously at the time, and it seems that we were right to uh, exercise some caution because the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine has denied all responsibility uh, for the World uh, Trade Center crash, the crash in which we already know that six people have been killed, um, over a thousand injured, with the sad expectation that there could be many, many more people um, killed. Stephen, what is the atmosphere like in Washington at the moment? Uh, obviously, there, there, there could easily be an atmosphere of near panic in the streets in particular around about the Capitol buildings. I think a sense of great vulnerability and I think a sense that uh, for the United States, a real feeling that there are people out there who do not, well, if it, it may not be that they don't like this country, but they certainly don't like uh, the people who run this country. And I, I think one has, to, one has to say it's almost certainly connected with uh, the United States and its foreign policy. And I think a great sense that there are people out there who, 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 are, who are keen to bring the United States down, or if not bring it down, at least humble it by showing just how vulnerable these things are. Now, of course, it may seem extraordinary that uh, two or three planes could fly through the air from Boston to New York or, or wherever and then crash into the World Trade Center without being detected. But we've seen before low-flying planes that uh, tw 20 years ago there was a, uh, a young uh, German pilot who flew all the way to Moscow through the world's best air defenses and landed in, in Red Square without being detected. So uh, unfortunately for people here, uh, they have to accept that these things can happen, that even with the huge US uh, military might, you know, that people, President Bush is talking about missile defense, uh, trying to protect the country from uh, ballistic missiles coming from other countries. But, you know, uh, someone determined enough and uh, willing enough to lose their lives, of course, because we're talking, I think, here about suicide bombers. Uh, if they want to get a couple of planes, fly through U.S. airspace, it seems that they can do it. And of that's course, pretty I, I remember the here. case of the young German who landed. He landed on the White House lawn, as I remember. It was considered a scandal in the United States at the time, and we were told that it was unprecedented and could never happen 
again, all the more extraordinary that three separate planes um, could be uh, flown, two of them over Manhattan airspace, um, given the record of terrorism that the United States has seen in the last decade in Manhattan and the World Trade Center, but also that you could, you could uh, fly over Washington airspace. Yes, well, the thing is, it, 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 it's obviously possible, you know, and if you fly low enough, you're, you're out of sight of radar. Uh, the, the people here, the Pentagon here, would have other methods of detection. But, you know, to, in a, to a certain extent, in order to avoid these threats, you have to see them coming. You have to have some sort of idea of what people are planning, what are they going to use. So in the case of uh, missile defense, the president wants to protect the United States from uh, ballistic missiles, and we know roughly what they are, and that's why they think they're able to devise some sort of strategy for dealing with them. Okay. But, uh, it just... Uh, listen, I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it there with you. We're getting uh, reports in from the United States, Valerie, which uh, report that the Federal Aviation Authority says that all planes in the United States are being held on the ground, uh, which is quite extraordinary, unprecedented, out of thought in American history for every single plane in the United States to be held on the ground. Indeed, John. Now, I think we're joined on the line now by Abdul Bari Atwan, a, a Middle East expert. We're getting unconfirmed reports that uh, Middle East terrorists are claiming responsibility. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, actually, we heard that the uh, you know, Palestinian Democratic Front uh, claimed responsibility for that. But I don't believe this report is accurate simply because it is a very small organization. It is a secular one. It is not used to this kind of action. But it is, if it is a Middle Eastern uh, attack or there is a Middle Eastern involvement behind that, I'm not uh, surprised if uh, radical Islamic groups uh, like the Laden groups or other actually were behind that, uh, where the Trade Center was attacked before by Islamic groups about uh, four years ago. So, uh, if, or five years ago, exactly. So if it's happened again, it means those people are repeating the same thing, the same tactic, the same attacks. Uh, second thing, you know, the anti-American feeling in the Middle East in its peak now, uh, you know, everybody, uh, there were a lot of reports, a lot of articles in the Middle Eastern press calling for to attack the American interests simply because the Americans are taking the Israeli side. And we know that the Israeli now are, uh, you know, uh, attacking Palestinians and killing uh, many, many of them. And at, until now, about 600 Palestinians were killed. So I believe that this anti-American sentiment, which is in its peak now, it could be, you know, behind these attacks. Attacks. And we know that the Osama bin Laden groups attack American destroyer coal in Aden, attacked American uh, mil uh, military personnel in Saudi Arabia, 19 of them were killed, also in uh, Khobar and Riyadh. So also Osama bin Laden issued a fatwa to attack American wherever they are, and he considered them occupying power in his country, Saudi Arabia. So. Uh, Maybe it is, it, is, it is the work of radical Islamic group, but, you know, I don't have any confirmation, but most of analysis actually, uh, you know, heading toward that uh, conclusion. Indeed, at the moment it is pure speculation, but uh, already we're having groups coming forward claiming responsibility and then withdrawing that. Are we going to see a lot of that, do you think? Oh, yes. You know, it is usually this kind of, uh, you know, claim responsibilities. Uh, it happens every time there is a big event like this or big attack like this, simply to divert the attention from the real organization which is behind uh, these attacks. So uh, definitely we will receive a lot of calls, a lot of uh, people who claim responsibilities. But uh, whether it is accurate or not, I believe that real people behind this, definitely uh, Islamic fundamentalism, because, you know, there are the people who are willing to kill themselves, to commit, you know, uh, societal attacks like this. They are doing it in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. They did it before uh, against uh, American uh, personnel in Saudi Arabia. Also in Aden, when they attacked the destroyer, American destroyer, coal. Uh, so, and they killed themselves, so I'm not surprised if they are uh, continue the same thing and, uh, and attacking the World Trade Center in order to attract the attention of the world, because it is, it is, they, they choose their target carefully. This is the most prestigious building in the world. This is the heart of New York. This is, you know, the economy, the heart of the economy of the United States. And so, also, we've seen them strike at the very heart of American political power as well, apparently in Washington, in the Pentagon. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, don't forget, you know, the, the Arab were really appalled by the American position during the anti-racial conference in, in Durban in South Africa, when the American took the Israeli side and they pulled out of this conference. 
and Israeli was not condemned. And there were a lot of dissatisfaction, a lot of frustration in the Muslim and the Arab world because they see the American taking the side of the Israel clearly. We'll Instead have to of being leave it there. Abdul Bari Atwin, thank you very much indeed. John. Thank Okay, for those of you who are just joining us on BBC One and News 24, let me give you an update at four minutes to three. The pictures that you're seeing now are live pictures of the World Trade Center in Manhattan in New York, which has been hit by two separate passenger planes. There are, they are horrific pictures. Um, approximately one hour ago, uh, the first twin-engine plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Um, a few moments after that, a second plane hit the South Tower. We then got reports that three planes in total had been hijacked in Boston. Two of them had been flown to the World Trade Center uh, in apparent terrorist missions. A third plane has now crash-landed near the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. The Pentagon, of course, being the seat of American military power. The Pentagon has now been evacuated along with the U.S. Treasury and the White House. The Federal Aviation Authority in the United States, that's the authority, of course, responsible for all flights over the United States, has now issued what's called in America a national ground stop order. What this means is that every plane in the United States has to remain on the ground unless it's already taken off. Those planes that have already taken off can continue to fly their journey, but it is, to the best of our knowledge, almost unprecedented for a national ground stop order uh, to be issued. The pictures, Mike of course, that you're seeing now are desperate attempts to put out the fire, I believe, in the Pentagon. We're as yet unclear about the number of casualties. Uh, the pictures, of course, that you can see from both the Pentagon and the World Trade Center suggest that there are many, many uh, casualties. Um, official reports so far suggest that there are six fatalities and uh, over a thousand people have been injured. But uh, anybody who just looks at these horrifying scenes must realize that there are, of course, likely to be many, many more casualties th than that. Um, much of downtown, downtown Manhattan, of course, has been evacuated. Eyewitnesses said that the first of the two World Trade Center buildings uh, was hit with a massive explosion, of course, as the, as the first of the planes hit. Um, debris started falling immediately. In fact, I can cross over to our correspondent, Steve Evans, uh, who was in the World Trade Center in New York when the first of these two planes hit the World Trade Center. Um, Steve, what was it like to be in the World Trade Center when it was hit? Oh my God. There's another explosion happening as we speak. We are seeing another explosion as we speak. We, we, the pictures that you're seeing now are of the World Trade Center in New York. Um, these are live pictures, however, that we're now seeing. We're now seeing live pictures of another building exploding in New York. Steve, I know you're at the World Trade Center. There have been two explosions there, but a third explosion has now taken place in New York. Steve, what can you see? Steve, are you with us? What can you see in New York? Well, we seem to have lost um, Steve Evans in New York. We'll try and get him back as soon as we possibly can. But just to update you, we now have two uh, explosions in the World Trade Center in New York. We have an explosion in the Pentagon in Washington. The Pentagon has now been evacuated. And we're now getting pictures. These are live pictures that you're seeing of a third building in Manhattan now collapsing, it appears, after being hit as well. That's a, a third explosion in Manhattan. These are quite extraordinary scenes. Let's bring in our diplomatic editor, Brian Hanrahan. In your long career, have you ever seen, seen anything I, I, I like never. this? This is clearly a, a, a terrorist spectacular, which is intended both to hurt and humiliate the United States. Uh, this is the, the center of, if you like, a, of, of the symbol of America, the, the, these twin towers of the World Trade Center, which dominate now Manhattan Island. Uh, and there they are, shrouded in smoke, uh, the American defenses against this, the, the, the idea that they're a continent isolated from the troubles of the world, broken down with a few simple hijackings and uh, this enormous picture of devastation and destruction which has been mirrored in Washington by an attack on the Pentagon, the center of American military power. Uh, it, is, it is quite astonishing and clearly quite deliberate to be intended to, uh, to put this on television around the world 
so everybody can see what the people who did this think of America. Humiliation of America, Brian, and also the stunning of the world. Indeed, it, 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 is, it is really quite unbelievable that it could happen, that it, it, could, it could happen so swiftly like this uh, and, and be there in plain view of everybody. We're talking about, what, an hour and a quarter since this began, and now... The World Trade Center there, one of the towers actually collapsing. The latest news, the UN has been evacuated. Let's opt into ABC television coverage in the States. Okay, we seem to be having trouble with ABC's coverage. Just to update you there, that latest picture that we've seen is one of the World Trade Center towers collapsing. These are truly extraordinary and horrific scenes. Um, both of the towers hit approximately one hour ago by uh, light aircraft in what is presumed to be uh, terrorist incidents. Both of the planes had been hijacked. We've seen a third explosion in Manhattan and we've seen an explosion of the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And within the last few seconds, the United Nations headquarters has been evacuated and one of the World Trade Center towers has collapsed. Greg Barrow is um, joining us now. Greg, what, what can you see? I believe, you're, I believe Greg, our correspondent Greg Barrow is in Manhattan. Greg, what can you see? Well, as you've been saying, one of the two towers of the World Trade Center has collapsed in the past few minutes and quite an extraordinary scene down there in the surrounding area. There's smoke billowing still from the one remaining tower, but the collapse of the, the second tower has caused a huge amount of dust and debris to billow out around the surrounding area, and it must have billowed out at least sort of three, four hundred meters around the building, causing yet more panic uh, far, far away, several blocks away from where the incident originally happened. Greg, um, were, were the authorities able to evacuate the area immediately around the World Trade Center in time? They've had an hour, have they not, since the, uh, the two explosions in the World Trade Center towers? Were they able to clear the surrounding buildings? Well, there has been an absolutely frenzied descent of uh, emergency services into that area, attempting to clear people away and get members of the public out. But there are so many people, so many thousands of people work in those buildings. These are two of the biggest office buildings in the world, so you can only imagine how many people are working there. That it's very, very difficult to move that amount of people out of that area very, very quickly at one of the busiest times of the day, just as they were going to, to work in the morning during the rush hour. And then, of course, with this incident that has just happened with the collapse of uh, uh, one of the towers, you, you, you have to remember that many of the emergency services, the firemen, the police, would have been on the ground underneath as that would have happened. What more do you know about the third explosion that we've witnessed just a few moments ago in Manhattan? Very, very little. I mean, the information is just, just coming through uh, as, as we speak. I, I, I think the whole incident has stunned not just the emergency services but also members of the public and members of the media it's very difficult to keep up with the pace sheer pace of these uh, successive explosions and events it's something that nobody really would have imagined happening and i think it's going to take some time to establish what the causes were who is responsible and and, and what sequence these things happened in we're going to replay pictures now of one of the world trade center towers collapsing that's what you're seeing now one of the World Trade Center towers collapsing approximately one hour ago. Two planes crashed. One plane crashed into the North Tower. A few moments later, a second passenger plane, a twin-engine passenger plane, uh, uh, crashed into the South Tower. Um, as you've been telling us, the place made frantic efforts to try and evacuate the surrounding area. Um, we don't know as yet how successful they were. Of course, as Tom was, as Greg was telling us, uh, as you would expect, their were likely to be many, many people from the rescue services in the immediate vicinity trying to rescue people from the towers when it collapsed just a few moments ago. So just to update you, both towers now, uh, we've seen with both towers, both towers have been hit by planes. We believe a third explosion in Manhattan, though that's yet to be con confirmed. One of the World Trade Center towers has now collapsed following the plane crashing into it. And uh, we should remember, of course, that uh, we've also got this situation going on in Washington, D.C., with the Pentagon hit as well by a third plane. 
also, we believe, hijacked in the Boston area. Um, in addition to the White House and the Treasury Department being evacuated, we're seeing pictures on the ground now um, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. These are pictures of the Pentagon, which, of course, is the headquarters for the American military, uh, an area of extraordinary security. The idea that planes could have been able to cross over Washington, D.C. airspace and crash anywhere near the Pentagon will come as a horrendous shock to people throughout the United States. Greg, our correspondent, Greg Barrow, in uh, Manhattan. What is the atmosphere like in Manhattan now? What can you see? I, I think the atmosphere is, is one of, uh, of, of absolute surprise. People are just stunned. Nobody could imagine this in one of the most densely populated uh, uh, cities in the world. Two symbolic buildings, two enormous buildings that have come to symbolize uh, American business power and strength around the world just destroyed in a matter of moments one morning as people were going to work. I, I, the scene is just astonishing. You can see smoke now billowing across the island. We've seen uh, aerial photographs which show the whole of southern Manhattan shrouded in this gray smoke. It looks like uh, an attack at the very heart of America, and I think that's how uh, it's being perceived by President Bush. Well, President Bush, as you say, has spoken a few moments ago. Um, President Bush um, suggested that they were terrorist attacks, which of course becomes increasingly likely. There's also been uh, lots of claim and counterclaim as to who may have been responsible. Um, one um, uh, news story that I can give you, the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who was due to be speaking uh, at the TUC conference this afternoon, has cancelled his uh, speech to the TUC conference and uh, we believe that the Prime Minister Tony Blair will be speaking shortly about about this. Um, meanwhile let's uh, cross over to... Uh, now we understand that the Prime Minister Tony Blair may be about to speak any moment now. Um, George Bush, President George Bush of course has already spoken. He was uh, due to be giving an address to a school, cancelled it, uh, spoke about terrorism and now the Prime Minister it appears is going to speak as well. But, um, Indeed, uh, John, President Bush was saying it was a national tragedy. This is before I think he'd heard about um, the explosion on the Pentagon and the evacuation of the Pentagon and indeed the UN and indeed of the White House itself. He said it was an apparent terrorist attack and he said the federal government would give all resources towards helping those affected. Obviously, an extraordinary crisis for his very early presidency. And I think uh, we're going to be able to go over to the TUC conference where we're hoping to hear from the Prime Minister, Tony Blair. He was going to make a keynote speech on uh, public services and the unions. There he is looking very solemn. There's Bill Morris, I think, about to introduce him. And we think that instead of making the speech as planned, he is, in fact, going to make a statement about what has been going on in America, this day, really, that, are, that has shaken the world. We expect to hear from Tony Blair any minute now. As you can see there on your screen, Tony Blair, and on the right, devastation in New York. Let's hear what Mr. Blair has to say to the TUC and, indeed, to everyone watching. Bill Congress, as Bill has just informed you, there have been the most uh, terrible, shocking events taking place in the United States of America within the last hour or so, including two hijacked planes being flown deliberately into the World Trade Center. I'm afraid we can only imagine the terror and the carnage there and the many, many innocent people that will have lost their lives. I know that you would want to join with me in sending the deepest condolences to President Bush and to the American people on behalf of the British people at these terrible events. This mass terrorism is the new evil in our world today. It is perpetrated by fanatics who are utterly indifferent to the sanctity of human life. And we, the democracies of this world, are going to have to come together to fight it together 
and eradicate this evil completely from our world. Delegates, I hope you will understand that I don't believe it would be appropriate to carry on the speech that I was going to give to you today. I know I have issued copies of the speech. We will make sure that all delegates get copies of the speech. But I think it inappropriate to give that speech now here. I will obviously want to carry on the discussions that we've had about the issues that concern us. I will now return to, to London. And once again, I thank you for your indulgence here. I am very, very sorry it has turned out the way that it has. But I know that, as I say, you would want to join with me in offering our deepest sympathy to the American people and our absolute shock and outrage at what has happened. I've visibly shaken Mr. Blair talking about what's been going on the United, in the United States this extraordinary day when uh, there have been two explosions, planes deliberately flown into the World Trade Center, and another one, we believe, flown into the Pentagon in Washington. We don't know how many people are dead, we don't know how many people are injured, but we understand that devastation has been wrought in New York itself. And uh, Mr. Blair was saying there, many innocent people have lost their lives and many have been injured. Obviously, it's far too early to know what's happening. But he said this was definitely the work of terrorism. And he said, Mr. Blair, along with other world leaders, would work to eradicate this evil completely. Well, of course, um, as you would uh, expect, um, claims and counterclaims changing all the time. Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine uh, initially claimed responsibility for this, or a spokesman for the group claimed responsibility for this. We um, exercised some caution when we heard that, and uh, perhaps wisely, because uh, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine has now come out quite unequivocally and said that it does not believe in uh, killing innocent civilians and has no responsibility for this whatsoever. This is, of course is not the first time that the World Trade Center has been hit as a, sem uh, as a sort of symbol of uh, American economic power. In 1993 it was hit as well. I'm joined now by our um, economics presenter. Of course five hours before us, John, uh, inevitably of course the World Trade Centers are going to be full of people. You know this area well. What, what how many people are we looking at? These are packed towers, presumably, full of people working at that time of day. Well, those two towers, between the two of them, employ roughly 50,000 people. It's an extraordinary amount of people. It's hard to imagine. They cram into those buildings every day. And unfortunately, just at the time that the first plane went into the tower was the time when they would have been disgorging from the subways and going into the building. So 50,000 people come into this story in one glance. And I have to report that since the story began at about 10 to 2 this afternoon, we have seen no trading at all, as you would expect, on Wall Street, because Wall Street is sealed off and traders are not being allowed anywhere near their desks, and the two main index are stationary. OK, but John, we're good to have to interrupt you for a second, because we're crossing over now to the United States to hear reports from eyewitnesses. And I'm standing next to a fireman. He said, yeah, they just bombed the Pentagon, too. So uh, uh, that's basically where I saw. Then I came running down here. Traffic is not allowed past Warren Street. And uh, yeah, you see what's here. Which, do you know which of the two towers? Uh, the one without the main antenna on it. The second one that was hit. That's the further south? This more uh, southerly tower? I think it's Tower 1. I'm not too sure the exact And one you actually the, saw it from the top I down I saw it come, just come tumble, It came sideways like this. It just collapsed in and on, on top of itself. It was, it was amazing, but uh, very upsetting to watch the whole thing come tumbling down. So we all thought it was another explosion, and we looked up. Instead of being two, there's one, and a big, a big plume of smoke. You, you were walking or driving? I was running. This, I was stopped in the subway uh, around uh, 14th Street. I had to jump out in the middle between cars, run down the catwalk to get out of the subways, because all the subways were stopped. Uh, and then I just started huffing it down from uh, West 4th Street. There was only traffic going northbound, nothing going. Everything was jammed going back this way. So just in case people are, are, are just tuning in, tell me again what you saw, what you heard. Around 6th Avenue and Houston Street, I was trying to make phone calls. I looked up, and I heard an explosion. And then I saw everybody in the street react first. People crying, people on the ground, everybody lying down. 
And then I looked up and I saw the and I saw this huge plume of smoke and the tower just crumbling, and it and it just turned into a huge plume of smoke. And next thing you know, there's smoke in one tower, and that's what we're seeing right here. So, and obviously there's plenty, uh, the people are worried about the, the press agents and everybody else that went the other way is so everybody wants to look this way. When you saw this collapse taking place, could you see if there were a lot of people on the ground near the building as it no, was happening? No, I was, I was further north than you were, but I was dead looking at 6th Avenue, the view you see of both towers as you right. come down 6th Avenue. Right. So, and right. most of this fallout stops about... <laughs> Well, of course, these are the extraordinary scenes. Just to update you, if you're just joining us on BBC One and News 24, um, both World Trade Center towers in Manhattan have been hit by passenger planes in an apparent terrorist incident. The Pentagon, the seat of American military power in Washington, D.C., also appears to have been hit by a passenger plane. At this stage, we believe that all three passenger planes were hijacked from Boston flew down the eastern seaboard before hitting their targets. In the last 10 minutes, approximately one hour after being hit by a plane, one of the towers of the World Trade Center has uh, collapsed. Uh, of course, 50,000 people worked in these towers. Let's get some more eyewitness reports now. I went to fire alarm company. The doorman goes to me, oh, wow, i never seen a plane flying so low. And we, we looked out at it, and all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And he, we came running over here closer to the place, and all of a sudden, we saw the other explosion. I don't know, I don't know. You know, that's all I saw. I saw a couple of people jumping out of the other building. I seen two or three people jump out of the building. The first one, the, I don't know if that's number one tower, number two tower. It's unreal. Scenes of people fleeing in panic, as you'd expect in Manhattan. Um, scenes of panic on the streets of Manhattan, of course, after um, two planes hit the World Trade Center towers. One of the towers, of course, has collapsed. There's bound to be speculation about the state of the other tower. Um, we understand that 50,000 people are employed in the two towers of the World Trade Center. That's 50,000 people. Um, the first plane that hit, hit uh, approximately 20 floors uh, beneath the top of the building. It burned furiously for about an hour, as did the second tower, before collapsing. Uh, the figures of casualties we have at the moment are very low, but bound to be higher eventually, sadly. I got skin from my thing here. Oh, real quick. You were in the, uh, which tower? I was in B tower. A, 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 a tower. What floor were you on? A B1. What floor? The first one. What happened? Tell me. When I, a big explosion happened. Some guy came out. His, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah. by the plane? Yeah, about 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. People jumping out. People just kept jumping and jumping and jumping. And you could still see they were alive because they were flailing around. The FBI has already stepped in to investigate. It could be possibly uh, a terrorist strike. Right, it could be. It could be because it was the first one went off, and then 10 minutes later, this just blew up out of nowhere. Hard to think that that would just be accidental. No, I don't think it would be accidental. Back it up, folks. Back it up. Back it up. Take my third penny. Jahanneman. Spell your name. J O H A N N E M A N N. And you were working there? As yes, I was right there. I was in the. I was down in the basement. Came down. All of a sudden, the elevator blew up smoke I dragged the guy out his skin was hanging off and I dragged him out and I helped him out of the out of, to the ambulance thank you right Actually, at this stage, um, our business presenter, uh, John Terrett, joins us. Um, John, you were telling us earlier that there are 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Center towers. 
It's an incredible number, it's very hard to imagine. 50,000 people employed in the two buildings. As a result of what's happening, and it's very obvious from what you're looking at why this should be, Wall Street is closed today, the markets there are not trading. And because business hates uncertainty, two things have happened. In London, the FTSE index, our leading index of 100 shares, has fallen through the floor. And at a quarter past three this afternoon, it was 250 points down. A few seconds ago, it was 223 points down. The euro has been rising strongly against the dollar. And also the price of Brent crude oil trading in London has risen sharply by more than $2 a and barrel. John, of course, all sorts of claims and counterclaims of responsibility. Um, uh, we're Pickle, seeing Pickle, further Pickle. scenes, of course, of devastation in Manhattan Valley. Indeed, three words, I think, terror, chaos and confusion.